So welcome back everyone. I am very, very excited about today's video. Something has come into my possession that I have looked for for a long, long time. It's the Stanley Depression Era number two smoothing plane. Considered by a lot of collectors to be the most elegant and beautiful plane that Stanley ever produced. Highly sought after, highly desirable. And today we're gonna to start a full restoration. So we've got, we've got these little screws here. Everything is steel except for these th the three pieces. We've got the that beautiful brass adjustment knob right there. Polish that up. Here's one I just finished up right there. You can see that's the another one of the adjuster screws. And then I've got to, we'll clean up, get up all those threads cleaned up there. And here's one that I just finished, that little stud for the back reverse handle. Got all those threads cleaned up. And little, just a tiny little drop of oil on there when we put it back together man this is going to be neat so to, to polish this brass i use a wire wheel on the grinder good bench grinder like this is an essential tool you want something no less than about a third horsepower i think that's it this one is 0.33 uh, with a wire on one side that's the way granddad always did it and then a traditional grinding excuse me grinding wheel on the other side and they're just wonderful for so many things be careful when i'm done if I'm doing a lot of work with a wire wheel like this, in my shirt is it's got half a dozen of these little wires sticking in there, they fly off. Be careful using good safety glasses whenever you're using that. But and be and but if you do it carefully, it would work really good here for cleaning up threads. Now I'm gonna use gloves because I get close in. I know the safety sallies always come out. I know you're not supposed to use gloves with tools like this, but I you know I get dangerous my middle name. What can I say? Always work on the down spin off the wheel, meaning it's turning this way. Don't go into it. It'll, it'll jab and take, the, take it right out of your hands. So you always want to work on the downhill side, but you can see, see how those threads there are rusty. You can get in there and work on the corners. You can even get these wheels in brass. I've never had one, but if you were doing really delicate work, that might be a good option too. But you can see there how good that works. So I'm going to, and on the small pieces, you know, like this here, sometimes I'll even grab a pair of pliers or a channel lock and get it in there because they're too hard to hold on to. So I think we've got everything sufficiently shined up. Everything turned out really nice. So here's the, look at that, that adjustment screw, the brass. I polished the inside of that the best I could with the steel wool. That is nice. That is my, that's my favorite piece right there. Here are the ends. These are the screws. They're little barrels, little barrel screws that go through the handles here. They look to be both the same. Those look nice, don't they? And I do believe, um, so I learned, I learned quite a bit from, uh, from subscribers about the plane. So I also, before I go any further, I forgot to mention, um, I'm very sorry, this plane was given to me by my subscriber, Carrie. And Carrie, this belonged to his father. His father's name was um, James. And he, he, to get a little history on this, um, Carrie thought that his dad had probably purchased this sometime somewhere in Minnesota. So again, thank you, Carrie. I hope, um, I hope, um, you enjoy, hope you enjoy this series um, as much as I have enjoyed doing it. Uh, okay, so where were we? So, okay, so let's put, we'll get everything put back together. So one last thing that I forgot to, or that I mistakenly mentioned. So I said that the number two, or I thought that the number two was the smallest Stanley plane. It is not. Um, several of you pointed out that there's actually a Stanley number one, and it's exceedingly rare. Not something that any one of us are likely to have and hold. Um, I looked at, there's a couple of them on eBay and they were in excess of $1,000. So that's uh, out, of, out of reach for us. But it is a, um, there is a smaller one um, that's um, smaller than this one. All right, so let's, let's put everything together and, and uh, see how it looks. This is my favorite part. You know, it's not my favorite part. Every, I'm reluctant to even do these videos anymore because it's just so exasperating. There's always the, 
there's always the purists that come out when I do one of these planes and it's like, you're an idiot, you ruined it. Uh, you, you have taken away all the value, it's worthless now, you should have left it like it was. And, and I've had that comment, it doesn't matter the condition of the plane. Here's a number six that I'm considering uh, maybe doing next. Um, they would prefer we just leave it like that, that they think that that's of more value and, and that that's in the not ruined condition, but this is. So. I don't know, what can you say? Let's focus on the positive here. Okay, where do we start? So let's start with the frog. So I learned an interesting thing here with the frog. Uh, I asked uh, yesterday, I didn't know, you know, what? This doesn't really look like a frog. Why do they call this thing a frog? And there were lots of different explanations. Somebody said that this looks like a frog leg, which it does not. Uh, but I guess f from, from, what I, from what I read, uh, it looks like the most probable reason for it's called a frog is that this portion of the th plane is called the throat, right? In here where the, the throat, where the, where the iron comes out. And uh, the guys that were producing these and this is, sounds British too, because the British always they have that funny sense of humor. Um, called this the frog because you know the frog in the throat, or the frog because it's behind the throat. You know, I don't know if that's true or not, but I like that story best. It seems to make uh, that's one that makes me the happiest. All right, so let's before we put this together, we'll put a little bit of uh, machine surface there. We'll put a little ballast all on that. That'll protect that a bit. Here I've got a little. One of my little favorite things that I've bought. This little, um, I was uh, on Amazon uh, getting some Hopi's Number no. 9. Hopi's Number no. 9 is, uh, is the old school gun cleaning solvent. And I'm really partial to that because my granddad used it. And I have those memories of coming back after deer and elk hunting on the kitchen table, cleaning our rifles out and the smell of that Hopi's Number no. 9. So I was on the, uh, so I was picking some up. And this came up in the suggested there. It's a little, uh, little precision oil dropper. And I think it was $2.99 or so, and it, I, I, it even came with oil in it. I, this is a wonderful thing for if you, just for everything, I, I use it all the time um, to be able just to put a really, you know, really small drops of oil. I guess I'll just put that right on there. You can see here, look how small of a little bit you can put on there. You know, I'll bet that lasts a guy a lifetime because you, know, you can really control it instead of, you know, like, and I'm the... I'm the chief of sinners when it comes to, you know, look what I do with my glue, you know. We buy these bottles of oil and, you know, they're gone in a year and do we really need it that much? No, it's because we don't have a good applicator and it just kind of gets wasted. So we'll put a little... I've got these. I put up a little category in uh, my Amazon store, wranglermart.com, uh, that has some of my favorite uh, restoring tools. Or I put the Rolock angle grinder. I found a really good one that came with a free... Um, a little free roll lock attachment, and then a, um, a really good deal on the tri-pack of the little discs. Because um, I, I used to buy those locally and they were just so expensive. You get like six at a time for $29. I found a whole big old lot of them for, I think it's 21 on there. So I've been ordering from them. So that throat, that, or that frog has got some adjustment in it. And I don't... I know at one time I remembered about how that should be adjusted or what it does, but I don't remember anymore. I'm going to have to go back and revisit that. But we're just going to put it together here so we can um, level out the, the sole. So it's nice and tight, but not too tight. That fits on there nice, doesn't it? That looks really good. Okay, so let's put the, we'll want to put the handle on because if we don't, if we don't do this in order, then we have to take it back up again. Those look, turned out good, didn't they? I just love those brat. Look, that, that's a nice little piece right there. That's a. Well, let's put a little. Let's put a little drop of oil on here. You know, get in there and not going to hurt anything at all, is it? All right, feels pretty good. Handles. I, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but handles cleaned up really good. I didn't. I was going to sand them down, but I hate to change the original stuff, and I just hit them with that double lot steel wool. And look how nice, aren't they pretty? That rosewood. Apparently you can't get rosewood anymore, right? or hard to get, I guess. I, that's what I was told in the, in the comments there. All right. Tighten this guy down here.
Oops. Well, I should be more careful there. Okay. And now, here's the best part. Look at this. All right, this is backwards thread. Look at that. Sorry, so that little, uh, that little pawl right there fits in between. I'll put a little drop of oil on here. Love that dropper. This is what will... Is that close enough? You guys can come in closer there? Let's see. And that should fit right in there and roll in nice and smooth. And that will, that's what adjusts the, the iron. Doesn't that brass look nice? Against that rosewood, that's really pretty. That's old world right there. It's old world. Okay, so let's set this aside. We'll come back, we'll be coming back to this here, the iron and the chip breaker, because we'll have to do some work on those. But um, let's put these together. I got chastised yesterday for using the, uh, the cap for tightening these screws. They said it could break it. I thought, you know, I hadn't thought about that. It's probably a, why run the risk, right? What I'm talking about is right here. These are kind of, I don't know if they were designed this way or it just works out that you can tighten with that. That is kind of fragile there in its cast. So that makes sense to me here. Use our made in England footprint screwdriver. Okay, so this should fit something like that. There you can kind of see how the how that fits back and forth. Let's see, where are you guys at here? I'm making them a little bit tight there. So you can see here that's adjusts that angle of that blade. We'll also talk more about that when we're, when we're trying it out. So this is a little bit tight, so let's put a little drop of oil right there on both sides. Looks good, maybe even right there on that, that pawl. That's kind of a bearing surface right there. And we'll put a drop where that adjustment screw goes in there, which is, we'll put that in there right now. We can put, this is the screw that holds the, the clip in. And sets the adjustment, the tension. We'll tension that there in a minute. Now we can put that, put this one together. Let's put a drop of oil on the threads. Might be a little corrosion in there, so I'll get that coated. Probably wouldn't hurt us to put a little machine surface there, put a little ballast all on there. Mm, I like the smell of that stuff. I can't believe that some people don't like the smell of it. I, I guess when I first smelled it, I didn't like it either, but I actually like it now. Tighten up our front grip. Okay, it looks good. Now for our, I guess this is our final piece here. We'll put our So that's too tight. So that's how you adjust the tension on this on this uh, spring clip there as you back that out until that fits over there. That. And if that's too tight, you just roll this out a little bit. somewhere just like that so you can still adjust it a little bit yeah that looks really good boy that turned out let's take a close look see how everything looks how beautiful is that isn't that neat that just gives me the fizz 
That is just a gorgeous, that is a, such a beautiful little plane, isn't it? Well, let the purist have his rusty plane. I prefer it this way. I prefer it to be brought back into usable condition than to just be something of a, that's only purpose is just to be value or to someone. Isn't that, now look at how good that brass turned out there. Isn't that gorgeous? That is a beautiful little plane. I'm so happy that the, uh, I was able to keep that orange in there. You know, it, look, it just looks old to me. This, this looks like a, a plane that, I mean, it doesn't, it looks, it doesn't look like one. It, I think they look nicer this way than when they're completely restored, you know, made perfect again. You know, you got all the dings and dents in there, but that's, that's just kind of cool. That is a neat little plane, isn't it? I can get three fingers in there. I, I would find it com to be completely usable. Um, I mean, it fits my hand very well. Someone said that these were designed and made for to get children involved. I don't believe, I don't think that that's right. There's just so much, there's, I mean, it could be. There's just so many opinions put out there that are just not based on anything. That's one of the problems with the internet. It's not like it's set some, I, I, mean, I, I appreciate someone saying that, you know, perhaps this is the reason, or it seems to me that this might make sense rather than just this is stated things just as a fact. That's pretty cool though. Isn't that beautiful? All right, well, I guess we'll have one more part. We'll uh, take it back apart. We'll, we'll smooth the sole and we'll uh, do the iron and then we'll do a test. And I'll show you how to, I'll show you how I was taught to set it, set it up. Well, I guess I'll just go by the, what I learned from Paul Sellers. And Mrs. W bought his books for me. And so that's my guide to all these things. I like his, I like his approach, but isn't that beautiful? That is really, really nice. Oh, I nearly forgot. So I was, this is a, this is a number six, a number six Bailey right here. It's kind of interesting. It's fluted. You see, it's got the flutings on the bottom and that was done, I believe, to help reduce friction. And that doesn't look like it's in too bad of a shape right there. And I was thinking about restoring this one. And I'm always, when I'm looking at restoring these, I'm, I, I'm not too concerned with it covered in rust. What I am concerned about is if there's deep pitting. And also, are all the pieces there? This one is a, it's a Bailey. And I don't have a number six. There's a Bailey right there. I think it's a good plane. It looks, it's got the, we got the brass. It's all seized up though. It's much worse condition than the little number two was, but I don't think it's beyond the realm of, of repairing. Um, the only thing that's bad is that the handles, this handle right here is, is broken. And this handle here is, it's got a chip out of it right there, but I wouldn't say that it's not usable. I think it's entirely usable. It'd be interesting. I've never, I haven't taken this apart. This is the first time, but look at there. We got the same. You got exactly the same barrel and pieces. Looks very, oh, it's got a crack in it right there too. You see that? Same pieces as a little number two. But I think it's, I think it might be worthy of restoring. If, it looks like there's some serious rust here on the chip breaker. But that's, um, you know, that's a piece that could be replaced. But it is completely seized up. Well, it, it, the, the rear handle is, it's also, it's bad. It's, there's no fix in that right there. But the barrel nut's still in there. I wonder if we could. I wonder if we could take that out of to see how that looks. This might be. Maybe we should do this for our next project here. It'd be really neat to have a number six Bailey's. There's the nut. Yeah. You guys want to see another plane restoration, or was that number two enough? Let me know in the comments if, if, if you give me enough thumbs up on this video, um, then I'll know you want to see it and we can, we can do this one too. Maybe we can find a handle on eBay or something. All right. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.